here's Larry Kudlow. And, um, you know, you recall a month ago when Donald Trump came out said, oh, there's only 15 cases. I think we're basically over it. We basically finished it, basically winding these down. And, you know, Kudlow said, look, we're, we're mostly contained. We're contained. It's a little leaky, but we're contained. They were having meetings in the White House in January. I got an email from a listener in uh, Las Vegas. Mick Mulvaney was there before he was let go. Apparently, this guy was waiting on Mick Mulvaney. And he said the table was just laughing about how they were all going to make money off of this stuff. I don't know if that's true or not, but I don't have a hard time believing it. I don't think that they took this seriously. How could they? They fired all the experts who would have told them otherwise. But here is Larry Kudlow on with Martha Raddatz over the weekend on ABC This Week. Asked, like, why did you provide the country with such incredible misinformation? This virus, nobody expected this thing to come down as far and hard and widespread as it did, but it did. And we it, are it, Mr. Cuddle, I want to I want to stop you there just for a second, including you. It was it was also just a month ago you told CNBC that you thought the virus was contained in the country, even though doctors were warning others. Otherwise, you also downplayed the threat of a long lasting economic tragedy you have since said that was based on facts at the time but yes. why should people trust you this morning with but, your prediction look i'm as good as the facts are and at the time i made that statement the facts were contained the president had just put the travel restrictions on china and a lot of people agreed with me in fact at the time a lot of people felt that the flu was worse than this uh, virus but as soon as the facts changed we've changed our whole posture and our whole oh my gosh he also apparently is, um, I don't know, he's just gotten very slurry since he's joined the administration. But the facts have not changed at all. Not one iota. Not one iota. The doctors were saying the exact same thing when he said that. We need to take this seriously. You had even um, Azar at Health and Human Services trying to get the president to take it seriously. He was more concerned about flavored vaping they did not take this seriously because they fired all of the people in government whose job it was to tell them to take it seriously they did not take this seriously because they were hoping that it would just blow over and there would be no implications for donald trump's economy or electoral chances There is no doubt, and it's going to become clearer and clearer, how we have failed to respond to this crisis in the way that, I mean, against, you can put us up against every other country in the world. And we, our failure has been dismal. Dismal. And it's going to be worse. And we can blame the American public, but... If you don't have leadership, federal leadership, saying whether you live in rural parts of the country, whether you live in urban parts of the country, whether you live on the coast, whether you live inland, whether you live to the north, whether you live to the south, you need to take this seriously. You need to take these certain steps. We need to shut it down for a period of time. We need to err on the side of caution. Unless we had even something like that, we, we, we couldn't possibly address this in the way that we, we needed to. Donald Trump is out there now saying 100,000 dead, that would be a win. He is comparing it to a number two and a half million that projections would have called for that number of dead if we had done absolutely nothing. If every governor did nothing, if every mayor did nothing, the president of the United States did nothing, two and a half million dead. Now he's hoping 100,000. 
Here is Joe Biden. Knowing what we all know, that Donald Trump refused to take this seriously. Donald Trump fired the coordinator of pandemics in this country who sat on the National Security Council. That Donald Trump fired CDC representatives, two-thirds of the office in China, including the person who tracks pandemics and epidemics there. That Donald Trump refused to exercise his power under the Defense Production Act to get ventilators built, to get personal protection equipment manufactured and distributed. That Donald Trump is playing favorites with states that are important to him electorally or with governors who kiss his butt. We know all this now. Joe Biden surely knows this. Here he is on Meet the Press with Chuck Todd. He doesn't want to get too dramatic about it, though. You know, your campaign put out your, in a critique of, of President Trump and says if he doesn't do these things, you know, he could, he could cost lives. Do you think there's already... Do you think there is blood on the president's hands considering the slow response? Or is that too, too harsh of a criticism? I think that's a little too harsh. I think what's happening is the failure to, as I watched uh, a prelim to your show where someone said that, uh, made, made the phrase, used the phrase that uh, the president just thinks out loud. He should stop thinking out loud and start thinking deeply. He should start listening to the scientists before he speaks. He should listen to the health experts. He should listen to his economists. He should, for example, the United States Congress passed a significant piece of legislation to help deal with the incredible financial crunch that's going to affect working families and all families, the whole economy. So we should be right now thinking about how do we get those small business loans out the door? Because right now you're not banks. That's not the strong point of banks, focusing on getting small business loans out. That's for most of the employees. He should be focusing on making sure we're in a situation where we're able to see to it that unemployment benefits can get to people. What's the IRS doing to get those $1,200 checks to people, et cetera? That's mm -hmm. where the focus should be, and it should be laser focus. Um, that may be true. Uh, but the bottom line is the American public needs to know that Donald Trump, it's not just a question he's thinking out loud. He need, the, the American public needs to be reminded of what I just said going into that clip. All the things that Donald Trump did. And frankly, it's not just Donald Trump. The Republican Party perceives government as the enemy. This is an opportunity. I mean, I, 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 it's not even an opportunity. It, it seems to me to be a prerequisite to getting out of this crisis is to remind people the importance of the federal government. To remind people the importance of government writ large. I mean, it's, it's, it's a stunning missed opportunity, both from an electoral perspective and in terms of our politics. Has there ever been a more clear opportunity of why our society needs to function as a unit? The whole thing with masks. It's all about a communitarian perspective of understanding, like, I don't know if I'm sick. I don't know if you're sick. This is what they said, apparently, in Czechoslovakia. It was like, I wear my mask to protect you. You wear your mask to protect me. This is a golden opportunity for Joe Biden to say those words that Ronald Reagan said 40 years ago. You know, watch out. I'm from the government. I'm here to help. We're wrong. They were deadly wrong. And we see that Ronald Reagan's descendants, political descendants, who came in and attacked the CDC, the Koch brothers attacking the CDC, cut billions of dollars they wanted to from their budget 
fire the head of uh, the pandemic coordination team, get rid of the position. Now we're seeing that they, they're, they're privatizing and outsourcing the meat inspections to the people who are producing the meat. For the USDA, they're rolling back all the EPA regulations. This is a time for Joe Biden to get out there and make the case for why government is so important. And instead, he's basically trying to show that he has some grasp on some of the details. It really is, um, it's a missed opportunity. It also occurs to me that it may be a problem in the fall. We'll see.